So thank you everyone for taking time today to join us for today's webinar. We're certainly going to give you some, some tools that would be uh, advantageous in your job search process. Reference solutions, we compile information here in Omaha, Nebraska. So that's where we call home. There are roughly 1,100 of us here in Omaha. And gosh, we have been in business now 49 years. Next year, we'll get to celebrate uh, 50 years. So we're quite excited about that. Reference Solutions is available through libraries across the United States. Of course, you need to have, as you would with the San Francisco Public Library, their library card number in order to gain access to our database. Once you're here, you'll see the San Francisco Public Library's logo right here on our uh, Reference Solutions database. Before we get started, uh, looking at jobs and internships and some of the supporting information that I'll show you. I do want to do a, just a couple of housekeeping items first. Know that we offer webinars, so anyone can attend any of our webinars that we do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And with the Learning Center, we have some great information here that you might choose to utilize. If so, you can certainly just open that up and simply scroll down here. We have our contact information all over the place, of course. You can always reach out to the library, but we're here to support you as well. What I wanted to point out was the training material here. I'll open that up. And on this left-hand column, we have these database overviews. So we're going to focus today on the jobs and internships module, as well as the US business database module. There may be times when you would want to be able to search this universe as well. So I'll introduce both of those. Know that you can use these overviews and they will literally walk you through how to do a search. So that's always available to you. There is a data dictionary as well here. So if you had a question about a business record and maybe some information that was in that business record, chances are you'll be able to find your answer to it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and go back. I wanna show you a couple of things as well on the home page. So I'm back here on the home page. I do like to point out that we do have an app. The jobs and internships module is not in the app, but the US business database, we populate all of our business records with any job openings that we have learned about through indeed.com. That's who provides us with this insight about employment opportunities. So you could certainly still get to that kind of information in the app by going into the business database. So know that that's available. And I do like to point out we have these personal accounts that you can sign up for. So once you've registered, you can save your searches. And that would be true for the majority of the modules. But with the jobs and internships, you're not able to actually save information in that personal account. But we do give you the ability to email yourself those results that look perhaps most attractive to you. So no, you can still in essence save them, just not in our personal account. But once you've registered, you can log in. And if you've maybe created a list of businesses that you would like to go back to, obviously you could have saved that list and then got back to that listing. What we do is we save the steps that you took to build that list. So if there are businesses in that same industry type that you were interested in, you would see new records as they're added. We're pushing out the updates to this information 
every Thursday into Friday morning. So 52 times a year, this is going through an update. Whereas with the jobs and internships, we're getting these feeds in some cases, multiple times during the day. At least once a day, this will always be updated, but you, I've seen where I've done these presentations in the morning and then again in the afternoon and I find more listings. So that's being done daily and in some cases multiple times a day. So let's go ahead and start with the jobs and internships. Think of it this way, with the jobs and internships, you're gonna be able to go in and search by job titles. With the US business information, which is gonna provide you with insight about who that manager or owner of that business might be, how big that business is, business is based on number of employees or sales, uh, that line or lines of business that that business might be in. You know, think about Walmart. Their primary line of business is a department store, but they have so many departments that we track all those other departments as well. So we do that with businesses uh, all the time. So a business maybe have, maybe they're a restaurant is their primary line of business, but they also have some products that they sell to the side. Think about uh, the Cracker Barrel, for example. When you first walk in, you walk into this area in Cracker Barrel where they have t-shirts and, and cl other clothing items and candy and all kinds of other stuff. So their primary line of business is that of a restaurant, but they also have that secondary line of business. So we'll provide you with access to that job description and the ability to apply for that job, as well as that information about the company doing the hiring. I'll go ahead and launch the jobs and internships. Once I do so, I'm always going to come to what we refer to as our quick search page. And I don't like to come here without scrolling down first. And I, I know that there are a number of library sponsored events in regards to various types of job resources. We also make various job resources available here. So know that you can always get to some of that additional kinds of insight as well. So with quick search, there are some parameters that the system is set up uh, in, this, in this particular phase. So I can do a job title search. I could search for a, a keyword. Maybe, maybe training is something that I'm interested in. And so I wanna use that as my keyword. I could even look using a company name if I'd like to. Let's do this. One of the, one of the more common uh, questions that I hear from patrons when they're looking at utilizing the jobs and internships the first time is, how about if I wanted to find a job, say, for uh, an administrative assistant, could I go out and find that? Absolutely. All you have to do is come in here and type in that administrative and notice how the system is already trying to assume what it is that you're looking for. So if it's administrative assistant, you can simply click on that. And then it's a matter of what city, state, or zip code do you want to look in? I would, let's just put in San Francisco. So here's my San Francisco. Now I can view the results as it relates to any listings that are out there for administrative assistant types of positions. And the system, whenever you're doing this from the quick search page, it's always going to do a 25 mile radius. So it defaults to that 25 mile radius around San Francisco. And it will only deliver results that we have received from Indeed.com in the last seven days. So I'll view those results. Let's see how many of these Oh, wow, 291 results have come in in the last seven days as it relates to administrative assistance types of, of positions. 
And you can see on this left hand column, these are all the job titles that are available that have been listed through indeed.com. Here are my company records. So where we've made an exact match against that name and address information that we've received, we give you the ability to hyperlink right into the US business database to see that record. So if, if I'm looking at this and I, I see this office administrator, hmm, maybe that's interesting. Let's check it out. I can open that up. Here's that company that's doing that hiring. I can, I can use the apply now if I would like to submit my resume. If you already have an Indeed login, you can use that through us. In this case, they are giving an hourly salary. They've indicated that that's a full-time job. Remember when I was going from the quick search, I didn't have these opportunities to designate. It was looking at all opportunities that had something to do with that administrative assistance type of position. List those qualifications, that job description, et cetera. You know, all the, all the, all the benefits, et cetera, that you would expect to see. So all of that is available there. Note that it does say uh, work remotely, that that's not an option. So I've got that. If that's all I need, and now I'd like to learn a little bit about the company. I don't know who this G Sports Physical Therapy is. I could close that or I could leave it open and just go to this tab if I'd like. Then it's just a matter of going to that record. I can click on that record. It then opens up and it's saying, okay, so we found two addresses and notice a PO box. So this might have been their initial business filing information. When they filed their business, that may have been the information that they gave, or they just want all their mail going to that address. So I would start with the first record that comes up here to see if you find that particular listing. I can click on that. Scroll down, there's that office administrator. These, this was just listed 20 hours ago. Notice they have a couple. So I've got this information. I've got the address information for this company, their website and that social link that they choose to use. If this company were part of a larger network of companies, maybe there was a subsidiary that managed the G Sports, that information would be listed right down here in terms of the corporate structure. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I've got those job openings. There's the industry profile. This coding system, SIC, that stands for Standard Industrial Classification Code. So their primary is under clinics here and they do physical therapists, right? They have physical therapists that work in that office. Then I can go down, if there's a business profile, that information is captured here. We generally don't have it on those smaller businesses. We will certainly on those larger or chain types of, of businesses. I do have for your assistance, if this would be helpful, we have the latitude and longitude embedded in the background. So we know where this business is physically located. You could always print this off as it notes here. You could change it up to that satellite view. You could use the street view. It's quite, uh, it's quite up to you what you'd like to do with that insight. So know that that map is, will always give you a map presence on each and every one of our records. Now here are those business demographics. So we updated them just last month. We call these businesses annually and we ask them, how many employees do you have? They told us that they had 10 at this location. Now, 
What we don't distinguish is how many of them might be full-time versus part-time. We just need that total number because when it's a private company, we model this information based on the kind of business that they're in, how long they've been in business, where they're physically in business at. There are some, some of that has to go into the, the model for this sales volume because obviously there are, there are depending on where you're at in the United States, there's going to be everything from payroll costs that are going to be different to power and lights that's going to be different, et cetera. So we take all of that into account and then model this number. And we can look at their peers as well, right? So we've captured the number of employees and then that goes into making that model. Those businesses that choose not to respond to that question. So about 72% will give us an exact number. Those that don't, we look at their peers in that particular community or in that area. Sometimes peers goes out quite a ways because there aren't many of them. Uh, here, in, here in Omaha, we have a company that produces, manufactures, and sells beauty products. Well, guess what? There aren't a bunch of other ones like that here in Omaha. So we have to go out a ways to find those peers. But if we don't get an answer to that question related to the number of employees, we'll assign a range based on their peers, what we're seeing for an average with their peers. So it might be 10 to 19 or 20 to 49, et cetera. So if you see an exact number, no, we got that in our phone call. You see a range, we applied that. We have some other additional information here hours of operation, some management insight. Company news, this will either be about the company itself, and this is a small company, so chances are there aren't, uh, there isn't a lot of news about that particular company or about the industry. This is through Bing. You can always feel free to load that. If this were a publicly traded company and this were a branch, we would not put stock data on a publicly traded branch. We'll have it on the subsidiary or the ultimate parent, but not on that branch. Have some business expenditures, followed by some historical information, including these records. So we have, we do track uh, name changes, address changes, et cetera. And if you wanted to go back in time, let's say you wanted to look at this company from a 14, from a 2014 standpoint, you could open that record up and then the system will actually take you right into our U.S. historical business information. Notice I have this slide. So furthest back you can go is 11. If I wanted to go all the way back to 11, you simply grab this slide and go back. So know that you have that as well available to you. You can always get back to your original record. There it is. Then I have three other sections. UCC filings. So if, if the business had taken out a loan and put something up, maybe machinery or equipment up as, a, as collateral, that would be captured in that UCC filing. So there were a couple that were done here. If there were more than just a couple, it would say more down here. Then I have the nearby businesses, because again, I have that latitude and longitude in the background, so I know who's next to whom. And then, of course, a list of competitors based on that primary SIC code. So I have that list. I can always get up back to the top. Maybe I wanted to check out some of these places as well for, uh, for opportunities. I could always do that. Maybe I wanna look at this very first one. I could open up that record and it just takes a second to scroll down to look to see if there's any opportunities there. So that's the beauty of being able to, to get into through the hyperlink because I can always get to this U.S. business database information so quickly. And here I am back at that original record. It always closes this section up again. So if I wanted to look at the maybe the next one, I could go to that. 
and look at that record. So no, you can do that as much as you need to. That is always available to you. And I can get back to the top of that record just by selecting that. So if when I come into a record, I would like to, maybe I wanna get right to the management directory. I could click on that. It takes me right to that management directory. So again, just depending on what you need to do or the kind of information you want, right? That's, that's, that's what this entire database is about, is about being able to generate information that's, that's useful, that's, that's productive, that's valuable. So uh, that's what you can do when searching for a, an opportunity. And we did all of this by simply going and searching, and I'll cancel this because I didn't need to go to these other two records. We did all of that by just opening up this record, this hyperlink. So, and I got here by simply putting in administrative assistant in the keyword search option in San Francisco. The real search capability or additional search capability comes in advanced search because here I don't have the ability to say, hey, I only want to look at full-time jobs or I need a salary of X. I can do that when I go to advanced search. And here's my advanced search parameters. So I could search with certain words, maybe an exact phrase, sales training. I could certainly look at a specific company. Maybe I heard that there was a company doing some hiring. Job type, if I need full-time, I can designate that. Notice it's full-time all the way through temporary. So it just depends on what you might need. Even internships, if, if you have friends or family members that are, are looking for internships for the summer, bingo, you could have them start searching right here. Estimated salary, great thing to be able to do, but no, we looked at that last record and that was an hourly salary. The system doesn't calculate what that hourly would amount to in terms of dollars and cents. So I always encourage people, if you're going to use a salary, be sure and do it, search both ways. Do one with salary, it'll give you a smaller pool of records because not as many records actually have that salary information listed. And then do it once without, you'll have a larger pool, uh, and, but obviously it won't be defined by that salary. Location, always defaults to that 25 miles, as I mentioned, it could be within a mile, or 100 miles. So let's just do 10 miles and we'll do it around San Francisco again. And I'll say instead of the default is the seven days, notice it could be any time, so quite old, right? Uh, or since yesterday. Let's just do the last three days. Now, this is one that I get uh, a lot of calls about. And that is work from home. So yes, you can find those opportunities that would be work from home. I've noticed having done this for some time now, especially during this pandemic, that work from home might only mean work from home now, but eventually they're gonna expect people to come back into the office. So that would be something that you would want to confirm with that potential employer. So if I look at work from home opportunities that are full time within a 10 mile radius of San Fran within the last three days, I have a total number of 192. So again, just like we saw when we did the quick search and looking for those administrative assistants, I can simply scroll through. Now, notice on this page, fewer, fewer linkage uh, that we have. Like Cozy Meal, we have that hyperlink. Uh, MKD Group, we have that hyperlink, but I don't have it here. 
in these other businesses. British swimming school. I wonder if that's different than my my American swimming. I learned from my sisters. They threw me in, and if I didn't drown, I learned to swim. Uh, so, so the when we don't have that link. That doesn't mean that you can't jot this, the name of this business down. Just write that down and I'll show you how you could do a search for maybe several of these companies, if you'd like, by name. So just because we weren't able to make a match to this call center doesn't mean we don't have a record for this company. So certainly you can go through that information as it relates to any of these uh, job listings. One that kind of caught my eye was this key account manager. So I wonder if uh, Advent Tech is a key manufacturer, I doubt. Uh, maybe that's just the title they call for their account managers. So I could open that up and learn a little bit more about this, right? So it is a full-time job working remotely, obviously that job description, and, and it does indicate remote position in Northern California. So uh, I'm not certain what that definition really means. Uh, maybe it would say so in here. But uh, as you can see, it's got those uh, responsibilities, qualifications, et cetera. No mention of salary listed here. So again, similar to what I was talking about before. If that's all I need, or maybe I want to apply now, I could certainly do so. If I weren't wanted to learn more about this company, I could certainly select that information. And now it's giving me two listings, again, a PO box and a physical address. So I could select, might as well start with the first one, right? And you might have some cases where you see a half a dozen, or I've even seen a dozen different locations around the community. Might as well start with the first one and work your way through. And I would point this out. The other record that we saw was a verified record. This is unverified. So to provide you with the insight to that definition, Businesses from their inception start off as unverified, at least by us, right? We make these phone calls, to these businesses annually, and we ask them those questions about number of employees, et cetera. If we're not able to reach a business, and we will try reaching them for a total uh, number of attempts of a dozen throughout the course of two years, if we're not able to reach them and we don't see any information online perhaps about them closing, we will move that into that unverified. We're uncertain if this business is still open at this address. But now there's that key account manager's position. I can go through Notice that they're, they're importers. I can go through this record. The last time that we spoke to them was August of 2013. So maybe when we made that last contact with them, they said something along the lines of, please don't call us anymore. If they require that of us, we stop at that point and that business record will eventually become unverified because they've asked us not to call them anymore. So when we spoke to them the last time in August of 13, they didn't even answer that question about how many employees they had. We looked at this SIC code and their peers in the area and applied this range of one to four. That's how we came up with this location information as it relates to the sales volume. So doesn't mean that it's a bad record. Doesn't mean that it's a bad company. We are not able to continue updating that for some reason. Either A, they're not answering their phones whenever we call. And by the way, our researchers will call Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. 
Central Standard Time, and again on Saturday from 8 to 5. So we change up time of day, day of week, in order to try and get these business records verified. For some reason, we weren't able to have that happen with this company. Doesn't mean it's a bad company, simply means we've not been able to verify that. Let's pretend for a moment that you did apply for this position and found out that they're actually at a different address and we'll say even a different phone number. You can tell us about that and we'll try to reach them again to get information verified again. And the way you can tell us about any of our records that would need some type of update is select this data feedback. It's, it's much like crowdsourcing. And as it notes here, it's gonna be sent in to these researchers who are going to go based on whatever check marks you may have put in these boxes. And if there's not a box for it, but rather something that would need to be free formed, you could do that as well. But let's say that it were about the address. Uh, let's say that their address is now 1313 Mockingbird Lane. That's a reference to a... Uh, a sitcom, if anybody knows the answer to that address. Uh, so we could change that. We could change that, that phone number. Maybe the phone number needs to change. We could add whatever that is. Then you simply fill this information out, submit this to us, and we'll go about trying to reach that business to confirm that new information. We'll send you a confirmation of completion within seven to 10 business days. So just know that any of our records can be updated by you, the public that live in that community. I can always get back to my original record and those details. So know that that is certainly something that can still be useful just because we weren't able to verify it doesn't mean that it's not a legitimate company. And then I can go about, you know, doing what I needed to do with these other records. If some of these were records, and notice I have eight pages worth. If some of these were records that I wanted to email myself, let's imagine that I wanted this one and I wanted this and I wanted this and this and this one. How many have I have there? Five. So I can do six at a time. Let's say that that was the sixth one. At this point, I can simply come down here and email this information to myself. So select that email option. It will always come up with this insight. And let me provide you while we're doing this with the email address. If anyone needed to reach out to me, certainly feel free to do so. It's bill.carlson at data-axel.com. You can always reach out to me. I can add my email address. I can add my email address, which it just did, and then I can send that email. Notes that that was successfully sent, and let me pull that across for you. It just came into my email box. Just one moment. And there it is. Better double click that. And there they are. So you can email yourself six results at a time. So I could go back into that same listing and get six more business or six more listings about job openings in my area and send those to myself. I get the only limit is six at a time. So feel free to do that as much as you need to. That is certainly something that you can do with the database. So I'm back here at my list, and we got there simply by putting in that work from home full time within 10 miles of San Francisco, and I did change that up to three days. So you can certainly use this to find those kinds of job opportunities. Now, if you want to look at businesses by industry type, that's where I would suggest that you could go into, because I can't put business type here, 
I can go to reference solutions. That's my home key. Select it once, brings me right back here. Then I could go into the US business database and start my search. Again, you'll come to that quick search page. Great for finding one company. Remember, if you had written down a company by name, you could put that company name there and then in San Francisco or whatever community you might wanna use and then search for just that one record. Most people wanna be able to do a little bit more uh, in terms of using the available filters. So when you go to advanced search, in this case, you'll get this listing on the left-hand column of all these different filter selects that you could use. So you can include or even exclude certain types of information, just depending on how you wanna do it. Maybe you're gonna look in your city, but you wanna omit a couple of zip codes. Bingo, you could do that. Just depends on how you wanna frame your search. So let's do this. Uh, company name. If you've written down multiple listings, you can open up company name here. And this is where you can put in multiple companies. So if IBM were one of those companies, I could add that to my list. If Delta were another one of those companies, I could add that to the list. If Starbucks or one of those companies, I could add that to the list. And then it's just a matter of selecting whatever geography I want, and you'll get those listings for those companies. Otherwise, we will always give you company name. We will always give you this executive information as well, but maybe, maybe you need or want to use this as a filter. Maybe you'd like to find business records that have an HR contact. So you could go with human resources or human resources executive. You can do one or both. In some cases, you might get both. In other cases, one or the other. But you could use that as a filter, and that way you won't get any of those records that didn't have that contact. So you could certainly do that. Couldn't do that with Indeed.com. Could certainly use any of those as filters. Keyword is generally the way that people will do their searches simply because most people don't know SIC codes or for that matter, the NAICS codes. So when you select the opportunity to do the SIC code, it always defaults to the SIC code, either all inclusive or primary. Like if we were looking at Walmart and we said primary only, it would pull up just the department store. If I looked at all, it would show me all the different departments. So automotive and home electronics and, and uh, the, the pharmacy, et cetera. It would list all of them. But most people simply do a keyword search as it notes here, like with restaurants. If that was what you were interested in, for finding job opportunities, you would just include restaurants. Maybe you wanna look at hospitals. You could look at hospitals. Maybe you wanted to look at construction. You could look at construction. Maybe you wanted to look at manufacturing. You could look at manufacturing. It's any type of industry. So before I show you this example, Let's go to this major industry group. It is based on the SIC codes, but it's really pretty self-explanatory. So it gives you, when, when the SIC codes were originally in use by Uncle Sam, they always started off with a two-digit number and then followed by a four-digit number, and that was as granular as it, as it would get. We actually added two additional digits to that to make it a six-digit at minimum. So let's look under construction for a moment. If I click this plus symbol, it will give me the definition for each of these codes, each of these three codes. Bingo, there's my 15, 16, and 17, and the definitions for each. So if I were interested in finding general contractors, maybe that's my skill set, 
I can select that plus symbol, or I could just go with everything, everything that's under 15. But if I wanted to be more specific, I could click on that plus symbol. It opens up that four digit. So this was as granular under 15 as it got with Uncle Sam. We added two additional to make it this much more granular. So I helped a gentleman just the other day. We used this, but here's where we went with him. We went back here and it was under, uh, maybe it was back this way. Was it? Oh, it was under special trades. So we went here and he wanted, he, his, his training, his, his skill set. Uh, that he would really like to have that be the focus of his employment was about working with fine uh, tile and marble. So he wanted everything under this designation. So look at what happens when I open up this four digit. So it takes you and gives you access to all the businesses that any of these would be under. So he wanted that entire universe. And then for him, we just put in the county that he wanted to look at and he got a listing of those businesses. So if, that's, if that was gonna be my focus, bingo, I could do that. Let's just for the heck of it, let's just do your county. So I'll open up my county search. That's obviously a, a little bigger. And... We'll go San Francisco and I'm going to update my count. So this is my total number of verified records. Unverified is a huge universe because some of those businesses in there may well be closed. Remember, there's no place that businesses necessarily report closure. So some of those businesses that we may not have gotten a hold of we may not have gotten hold of them because they're really closed. We just don't know it yet. So this is my total universe of verified records. Looking across your county as it relates to these specific SIC codes, there are 42 companies. Now, I don't know if any of those 42 have job openings, but I can quickly determine that by simply, and maybe I'm gonna filter out some of these, like this is a custom, I don't know if this is a custom tile store or if they do custom tile, right? I could open that up real quick and see if they had any job openings. I could even go to their website if I'd like to get some more uh, insight. So it says that they're a tile chromatic contractors and dealers. So they probably sell. Well, they could do both. I can always get back to my original list and then I can go on right to the next one and quickly identify if there's any job opportunities. So you get the idea. It doesn't take you but a second. And by the way, I would get rid of these check marks as well. Uh, it doesn't take but a second to identify those if there's a, a job opening or not. The other thing that I would do, and I'll just go back here. If you see those, uh, you see these executives by name here, if this would be important to you, you could come out here to this corporate tree structure and I'll talk about this in a moment, but you could change this to the title of those people that are listed and maybe you want to look at only those companies where there's an owner present. You could do that. So know that you could use that as an additional filter if that would be helpful for you uh, once you've reached this, point, this, this phase of the database. Corporate structure. Let's talk about that for a second. So here's my corporate tree. Wherever you see this kind of linkage, there's corporate structure involved here. Carpet One, they're, 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 a, they're a pretty sizable company. So the up arrow will take you only to one record and that'll either be the subsidiary that's responsible for 
uh, managing all those branches, or it'll take you to the ultimate parent because that is uh, all there is. There isn't a subsidiary. This will show you their entire organizational chart. So I'll select that one. It'll open up this. Notice they're part of this CCA Global Partners, Inc. out of Earth City, Missouri. I am not certain where that's at. And I used to live in Missouri. I've never heard of Earth City. Uh, they have a total of 13 subsidiaries and some almost 1300 branches across the United States. There's a legend that runs across the top here so I can quickly identify that this is a private company doing very well. Carpet One is one of the companies that's under their umbrella along with all these others. If I wanted to see these other subsidiaries, I can simply collapse this one and there they are. So you can see there's a variety of different types of, of uh, companies under there. I would definitely, wherever you see this corporate structure, and let me go back to this. This is so important. So I got to all of that information by selecting this org chart. If I open up this record, I mentioned this before, I can also get to that corporate tree information here. So when, if this were a company that you were interested in working for, you would definitely want to have a pretty good understanding of their structure so that you could use this information in your interview setting if you have, so, if you have had an opportunity to go into such an interview. This is great insight to have and it points out the fact that you've done your homework as it relates to understanding this company's structure. This can be some great insight. So know you will always have that linkage, even when you're in the jobs and, and internships module and you have come into a business database because there was a hyperlink, this information will always be there if there's corporate structure. So know you can get to all of that kind of insight really quite easily. Any questions regarding either the jobs module itself or the US business database module? Yes, no, thank you. That was great. Um, so far I see two questions in the chat. And the first question is uh, for someone who's looking for a remote job. So is there a way, I think you covered some of it, but can you recap how someone who's only interested in looking for uh, jobs where they can work from home? Right, yes. So that would always be done because that's not an industry, right? Working from home is not an industry yet, yet. <laughs> uh, so with that said, in the jobs and internships, and I can do that right here from the quick search if I'd like to. Remember, it's always gonna do a 25 mile radius around whatever information I put in here. Or if I wanted to add, you know, maybe I wanna make certain that they're only full-time jobs that I'll see. I can then do my work from home option here and get that kind of insight I can change this up. Maybe you live outside of town a ways. I can change this up. I can do it from within five miles to a hundred miles. Just depends on what makes sense for me. And then it's just whatever you've chosen for that location and whatever city or zip code that you would want to use. And the default here in terms of the age of that job could be any time, right? I, I, I remember doing a program like this down in, in Daytona Beach, Florida, and we looked at the anytime segment and there was a position uh, for NASA uh, for down at the uh, Kennedy Space Center. So uh, anytime literally could be several years, uh, depends on how long they've put that job listing out there for. But I could make it since yesterday. So these are, brand new jobs. Let's look just for the heck of it. 
work from home within 10 miles since yesterday and we'll just do the same thing. So I have a total since yesterday in 10 and let's, let's actually make this smaller. So we'll do it within five miles. So what do I have? Still 138 since yesterday. So again, you can get to this information really quite easily. And if we weren't able to make that hyperlink, write down sage beans. If this were one that you wanted to, it says it's 100% remote. So if this were one that you really wanted to pursue, you could always look at the job listing here. There they've got a salary listed. We didn't put in a salary, but they've got a salary listed there. It is full time. They're looking at three people for this particular role. There's those job uh, qualifications and that job description. So you've got a wealth of information that you're going to get through indeed. And then you could always write the name of that business down and search for that record there in San Francisco in the jobs, or excuse me, in the US business database. Thanks, great question. Other, you mentioned that there were two. Yes, so there's another, thank you for answering that though. That was very clear and um, super helpful. Okay, so the next question, uh, someone is wondering about the coverage of job openings that Data Axel has. So she's wondering, um, so for current and past job opening, um, what is the, well, let me just ask the question that she posted. How much percentage coverage of job openings, current and past, of the range of industries across the US that Data Axel has? Do you have a few industries in which data Axel is strong? Oh, great question. So our, our approach, you may have heard of this other company called Dun & Bradstreet, right? They've been around for eons. Their, their admission into their database comes from the fact that people will join because they need a Dun's number, a Dun & Bradstreet number in order to work with government entities. The, uh, excuse me, I just received a reminder and I need to default out of that or I'm going to lose everybody. Uh, the, so Dun & Bradstreet will, will garner that or get that information from those people who, who either use their credit services or are going to need a DUNS number. So they'll capture their information that way. Our approach has always been about get as many businesses as possible. So uh, we have phone books sent from all over the country and we still have it done today. Only goodness sakes, they're, they're digital these days. So that's kind of the first trigger, but then we have all these other relationships that we garner, garner information from like our license agreement with the United States Postal Services National Change of Address. So if a business has moved since we last updated them, we'll get that new update to that address information. And then that will prompt us to make a phone call to that business to then learn about or to verify that new address information. So our whole process has always been try and have as many businesses by type as you can potentially have. Now, that said, we are not, we don't have a lot of true, uh, shall we say, dot com businesses, businesses that don't carry any kinds of products. They don't have a, a particular service that they manage. Uh, they, 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 may, they may provide information. Uh, we may not have as many of those businesses. I'll give you an example. I have a niece who technically she has like a home-based business. She's in Chicago. She has six employees. She has some great, well, I'm sure the pandemic has had a, a negative impact for her, but she had some terrific relationships with people in uh, the, on the North shore of Chicago that would use her services. She did everything from planning parties uh, to catering events to uh, uh, house sitting, 
Maybe they, maybe the uh, parents uh, are busy and can't get away from the office. They take their children to doctor's appointments. You know, obviously not serious, maybe a dental appointment, but uh, she's not in the database. She's got a great list of clients, her automobile that she gets to the appointments in, and this, this, this list of, of those clients, but she couldn't walk into a bank and get a loan against these names, right? She doesn't have anything tangible other than the service that she provides to those people. She is not listed in our database. She's basically a personal assistant. Uh, so we'll try and capture as many businesses as possible, but not every business will necessarily be in our database or anybody else's database for that matter. Uh, we're constantly looking to add and, and, and update. Other questions? That's it. I don't see any other questions in the chat. But thank we you for are, answering that. You bet. We are at the top of the hour. Uh, if there are no other questions, I would suggest if you're home or, or maybe somewhere else, but you would have some time to get into the database to do some searches, that you should do that and, and just get familiar with both the US jobs and internship search capability, especially from the advanced search category. Or you can always go into the US business database and search that as well by type of, of industry. Thank you so much, Bill. That was excellent again. And um, I really appreciate your time and expertise. Uh, you'll be back on July 13th with us to talk more about uh, business research. But, um, but in the meantime, I want to thank you again for an excellent presentation. And um, again, we'll be sending the recording for this later today. Excellent. Thank you so much for making this available, uh, this time available today. And thank you everyone for attending. I look forward to assisting you in any way I can and, and enjoy your uh, experience with the database. It's, it's, it's phenomenal information. Yes. Thank you again, Bill. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right, Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to end the meeting.